Who was asked to not certify it? Sure. So um, would you have certified? I'll ask you for the third Again, I, I would have asked the states to submit alternative slates of electors and let the country have the debate about what actually matters and what kind of an election that we have. So you in wouldn't have certified, states. to be clear. I would have asked the states to submit okay. alternative slates I, of I electors. Think that's, that's, what that's, that's, that's what I would have so, done. Again, I've, I've said that publicly many times. You just heard J.D. Vance say with his full chest that he would have refused to certify the 2020 election if he were in Mike Pence's position. He would have asked states to submit alternate slates of electors in order to let the country have a debate. But we already had that debate. It's called an election and Trump lost. But regardless, he says he would have asked for alternative slates of electors, i.e. fraudulent electors, to subvert the will of voters. That's not spin. That is literally what Trump's own attorney, Kenneth Chesabro, tried to do. Let me refresh your memory. AP reports a new memo was issued that called for expanding the strategy to other key states, creating slates of, quote, fraudulent electors for Trump. The end goal, according to prosecutors, was to prevent Biden from receiving the 270 electoral votes necessary to secure the presidency on January 6th. So while J.D. Vance calls them alternative slates of electors, Trump's own attorney referred to them as fraudulent electors in memos because that's what they were. They were fraudulent. It was a crime. And the criminal Trump attorney who admitted that the electors were fraudulent pled guilty after being indicted for his fake elector scheme. So when J.D. Vance says that he would ask for alternative slates of electors, he is quite literally admitting that he would have committed a federal crime to stop the peaceful transfer of power. He is saying out loud, mind you, that he would have disenfranchised all 81 million Americans that voted for Joe Biden so Trump can illegally cling to power after losing an election. And we're not hearing this from some anonymous source close to J.D. Vance or from a leaked email. We're hearing it straight from the horse's mouth. I'll say it again. A candidate for vice president is saying that he would have stolen an election, and yet this is still... A close election he still has a pretty good chance of winning wow i genuinely don't think that americans understand the gravity of the moment that we're in we might be sleepwalking into a literal dictatorship this november and the media is going out of their way to try to sane wash donald trump so as to avoid being called biased and we're all just pretending like this election is about the economy or inflation in my mind this is the only issue that matters because if fascists assume power and try to hang on to power in perpetuity, we're not going to get to weigh in in future elections. It'll be over. That'll be the end of democracy. And look, I understand that people feel like America was never really democratic in the first place and that our system is so broken and corrupt that it's almost comical to even say that America is a democracy. And I hear you and I agree with you. But ask any political scientist and they will tell you that you will feel the difference between a flawed semi-democracy and an outright authoritarian dictatorship. This is not a normal election. The future of democracy is at stake. And I get that we hear that all the time and it sounds hyperbolic, but in my defense, they're admitting it. Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed. It'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. I mean, what more is there to say? They're broadcasting their intent to steal the election after trying to do it four years ago. And Trump is still hanging on to the pretense of fraud all to justify his authoritarian takeover of our democracy. Just a couple of days ago, he tweeted this. He's watching the 2024 presidential election very closely, saying, quote, when I win, those people that cheated will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, which will include long-term prison sentences so that this depravity of justice does not happen again. He later adds, those involved in unscrupulous behavior will be sought out, caught, and prosecuted at levels, unfortunately, never seen before in our country. So if you commit fraud, he's going to prosecute you. The problem is that fraud is already illegal. And to make matters worse, he's presented zero evidence for the claim that there was widespread fraud in the 2020 election. His own judges rejected his claims because he had no evidence.
And the only fraud that took place in 2020 came from him when he tried to illegally overturn the fucking election. And this lie has poisoned the minds of so many Americans, not to mention it's made the lives of election officials hell, which is why we're seeing record turnover right now as they increasingly fear for their lives due to threats that they received from Trump supporters after he told them that the election was stolen. And all of this is happening because the lies of just one con man who doesn't want to admit that he lost the election. And look, he knows that he's lying. All wannabe dictators across the world use false claims of fraud as a pretense to do coup d'etats or illegally stay in power in some way. But after insisting for years that he actually won in 2020, he recently let it slip that he actually knows he lost during an interview with Lex Friedman. I was told if I got 63 million, which is what I got the first time, you 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 would win. You can't not win. And I got millions of more votes than that. And... Uh, lost by a whisker that's weird because i thought that he said he won interesting now it really doesn't matter because in the same interview he also talked about how the election was stolen from him and we already know that he privately admitted that he didn't win but he says this because his sick offense will accept whatever he says he could say that the sky is actually green and that pigs can fly and they'd believe him because this is a cult. But the fact remains that he has absolutely no evidence that the election was stolen. His latest claim of ballot fraud in Pennsylvania is something that even his own daughter-in-law, Laura Trump, who's also the RNC co-chair, admits that there's no evidence for. Uh, he was quoting Tucker Carlson here with an election expert that 20 percent of mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania are fraudulent here we go again. Where is the attorney general, the FBI to investigate? Where is the Republican Party in Pennsylvania? The RNC must activate now. Now, in August, the RNC, your RNC and the Trump campaign launched a get out to vote tool where Pennsylvania voters can request a mail in ballot directly. Is the former president saying that Republicans in Pennsylvania should not ask for these ballots? And no, quite the opposite. Donald Trump wants every voter, no matter if you're voting Republican, Democrat, or third party candidate, to so feel why comfortable is he that you that can 20 vote. Twenty percent of them are fraudulent. He's specifically referencing information from the 2020 election. What we're talking about right now is making sure that every vote matters and every vote counts. And I've worked very what hard. What information at do we have? RNC. What evidence is there that 20 percent of the mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania in 2020 were see, fraudulent? I didn't see that report, so I'd have to go back and look at it. So I can't directly speak to that. But what I can tell you is we've worked very hard on the ground at the RNC to make sure every voter in this country feels like when you cast a ballot, whether it's via mail, whether it's early voting in person, or whether it's on election day in an election uh, office around the country, your vote matters and your vote counts. And Donald Trump very much wants every Republican voter to vote however they feel most comfortable and every voter in this country to vote however they feel most comfortable. So I would have to go back and look at that. I have not studied that. Of course you haven't, because it doesn't exist. And if the CNN anchor pressed her on other bogus election fraud claims, her answer would probably be the same, because there's no evidence that there was widespread fraud in the 2020 election sufficient to change the fucking outcome. We all know this by now. Trump knows this by now. Every Republican supporting Donald Trump knows this. But they are lying because they are afraid of the cult that Donald Trump created. But put aside Donald Trump's election fraud bullshit for a second and just pretend like he doesn't actually want to become a perma president. Just pretend like that's the case. So look at his rhetoric alone, because that in a vacuum should be enough to make him a non-starter to America. Let me just show you one example. Like there's there's endless examples of Donald Trump saying disturbing things, but I want to show you one rally speech that he made recently where he was talking about migrants. He raised the specter of extrajudicial executions of them and said that his policy towards them would be bloody. That's his words, not mine. In Colorado, they're so brazen, they're taking over sections of the state. And you know, getting them out will be a bloody story. Should have never been allowed to come into our country. Nobody checked them. Nobody checked. Were they criminals? Were they from jails? We have them pouring out from jails. We have the worst criminals in all of these countries. 168 so far are registered. 168 countries. They're in our country. And they said, if you come back, you will be executed. You will be killed immediately. Not going to be easy, but we'll do it. 
For those who don't know, he is referring to a conspiracy theory about a Venezuelan gang that supposedly took over an apartment complex in Aurora, Colorado. But, you know, it turned out to be a complete hoax. But he decided to add another layer of bullshit to the false story by saying they took over sections of the state. And he's using that as a pretense to say that they should be executed, that immigrants in particular should be executed. No due process, no civil liberties, just execute them if they come back. So there's a pattern with Donald Trump where he'll make up a false claim so he has a justification to violate the Constitution. Immigrants, by the way, also have constitutional protections, just FYI. But what's to stop him from making up more lies to take more of our civil rights and civil liberties away? That's what he's going to do. How far will he go if he knows that traditional checks and balances are no longer there to hold him accountable. If Project 2025 actually does come to fruition and give him full control of the executive branch. Look, I don't wanna find out what that would look like. And listen, I know that people scoff at this notion that Trump is a threat to democracy because we've heard it so many times over so many years. But fatigue with that notion and commentary doesn't make it any less true. And listen, I'm not going to vote or shame anyone because I know that the Democratic Party is terrible. For years, they have spit in the faces of their leftist base and took their votes for granted. So I get it. And millions of leftists like myself included are reasonably pissed off at the Democratic Party because they're bad. They're not where they should be. Yes, they're better than Republicans, but that's a really low bar. So I get why people want to vote third party. I've done it myself in the past. But if you live in a crucial swing state, I would implore you to consider voting strategically for Kamala Harris. It doesn't make you a fucking sellout or a liberal to vote for Kamala Harris to defeat Donald Trump. This is how we stop fascists. As Callum Wilson of the U.S. Communist Party put it, voting against fascism is necessary because letting them win isn't going to bring us any closer to the socialist utopia that we all want. In fact, it'll make it harder to obtain. And the fact of reality is that we live in a majoritarian winner-take-all system, and only one of two candidates is going to become president. It's going to be Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. And lover or hater, Kamala Harris is the only one that stands between Donald Trump and the White House right now. And if you want a third party to be electorally viable, I hear you, but you have to fight to change the system. Otherwise, it'll never change. It's Duverger's law. Even getting 5% won't automatically make a third party electorally viable. We know this because it's happened before. Ross Perot's reform party hit 5%, and they still didn't build a long-term viable alternative to Democrats and Republicans because the system is just built to disenfranchise third parties. And it was done so purposefully. That is the way the system is set up. Now, I will admit that a third and fourth party would be awesome. I would love to see that. I want more options, but it's not going to change the underlying problem with our system. We live in a late stage capitalist society. And the core problem in my mind is capitalism, not the two party system. And I think that capitalism would corrupt a multi party system in the same way that it corrupted our two party system. But that's a different story for a different day. All I'm trying to say right now is that voting against Donald Trump doesn't make you any less radical. It's not an expression of your political ideology or love of a politician. You can hate Kamala Harris and still vote for her. It doesn't mean that you love her. It just means that you acknowledge that Donald Trump is an existential threat to American democracy. And as David Dole puts it, voting is a tool. It's one of many tools that we have to affect change in this country. And as Olaimiel Lauren put it, voting is about choosing your adversary if you're a leftist, because either way, the system needs to be fought against and the president is going to maintain the system. They're going to maintain the status quo. So whoever becomes president, you're going to have to fight them. So we are picking our adversary here. It is the eternal duty of radicals to try and fight. And since we're going to be fighting anyway, it makes more sense to pick somebody who is the weaker opponent who might be able to be broken a little easier. Trump's not going to listen to us. Kamala might. It's unlikely, but it's still possible. So I say all this to say we've got to stop Trump. I'm not going to vote or shame anyone who votes third party because, as you all know, I've been there before, too. But the situation now has changed. I am no longer voting third party because I've accepted the reality begrudgingly that we can't have 
a multi-party system unless we get proportional representation or at a minimum ranked choice voting. We have to fight for that first if we actually want to challenge the duopoly. Otherwise, we're just farting in the wind. We're not going to accomplish anything. It's a protest vote and that might feel good, but it's not going to produce the outcome that we want. We're only inadvertently enabling fascists if we don't vote against them directly, if we don't vote for the person who has the greater chance of winning. And it sucks. I hate it. But that's our system. Fascism has arrived in America, and the fascists are telling us that they're going to try to cling to power indefinitely. This is a new reality that we have to adapt to now. We're no longer merely talking about voting for the lesser of two evils. We're talking about voting to be able to vote in subsequent elections. And as leftists, our number one priority should always be stopping fascism. And voting against them is one of many things we should do to stop this existential threat. <laughs>